The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. All right, welcome. Welcome to Full Stature Ministries Kingdom Life Church Service. And I'm excited because God is doing something great and new, and you can participate. You can even participate by video. So that's, that's what's going to be fun. Now, uh, primarily, I want to talk about discernment and discerning of spirits. As a baby Christian, uh, it was something that I was uh, gifted with, and I didn't even understand it. As a matter of fact, I even asked God to take it away at one point and give me a word of knowledge instead. Because it was like if someone was saying, hi, Dennis, and they were really angry with me, uh, you, you, you can discern the human spirit. And I'd say, even though they're smiling and saying, hi, Dennis, I love you, Dennis, if, if it felt like anger in the gut, I didn't want to know. So I spent time in prayer with God saying, God, take that away. How about a word of knowledge where I could just get, oh, they're angry with you. Okay. That was easier than feeling the anger. Isn't it? Does that make sense? Emotionally, I didn't want to feel the anger. I wanted, oh, so they're angry. Okay, I, I can deal with that. Too bad. I'd have loved them anyway. Oh, well. And that's really what discernment should do. That should be the proper response. So anyway. To understand uh, discernment, it's to, I, I want to give three definitions anyway, a lot of threes today. Three definitions because it's not a common area, all right? Uh, to separate, to discriminate between, to distinguish, and here's a key, distinguish the source of something. The source. Keep that in mind. The word discern means to perceive, perceive, a, a dis, uh, distinguish, or differentiate between three spiritual realms. This will be repeated so much through this message. This is going to be a go to message later on when it's on YouTube. I want you to really participate with this because we want to cultivate and develop fruit in your life and it's going to require even taking your strengths and saying how about if i cultivate and develop some of my weaker areas right so that i can be more well-rounded in the spirit realm and understand better um, but these three realms are there is the divine holy spirit realm there is the evil spirit realm and the one people don't pay much attention to is the human Spirit realm. Did you know God made you spirit, soul, and body? And that your spirit, uh, your human spirit, and you have to get to the place where you understand, is that Holy Spirit? Is that evil spirit? Or is that coming from my human spirit? And for me, the human spirit was what God uh, gifted me with as a, as a baby Christian that I didn't understand what it was, but I could feel the slightest move. Unfortunately, I had to deal with the, any rejection issues because I had to deal with the duplicity of someone saying, I love you, pastor. Well, this is even before pastoring, before pastoring. I love you, Dennis, and then feel like, Bleh. I'm going, I'd rather you didn't say anything if it's not for real. <laughs> but I feel the source, the source is easy for me to identify. And uh, as I matured in the Lord and uh, quit bargaining with God, he said, the reason I've given you this, Dennis, is not so that you can feel irritations from other people, but so that you could discern, distinguish, and bring them to a place of deliverance, bring them to a place of instruction. It's for other people. It kind of dawned on me, you know, the gifts are not about you. The gifts are to benefit other people. And it's to give them instruction, counsel, healing, and uh, give 
it gives clear direction. It, it, it identifies the condition of a spirit. And where do you start? You start with you and God. All right, but we'll get to that. But um, the gift of discerning of spirits, I want to give two definitions because one man in his Bible school, Dick Iverson, uh, on the West Coast, uh, he defined it in a way that made me think he has the same thing I have. Uh, and here's the definition. Uh, uh, the gift of discerning of spirits is one of nine spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, which allows a believer to have recognition of, what's it do? It recognizes the identity, including the condition or personality of the spirits at play. Now remember, there are three realms. Could be Holy Spirit, human spirit, evil spirit. All right? But this discernment gives insight into the condition or the personality. And most importantly, the thing that I learned from the very beginning, the source. The source. Where does it come from? What's the source? Because people can say wonderful words but if the source is wrong, I feel the wrong source. So I'm not impressed with words. I'm impressed with the source of the words. Now, unlike other gifts of the Spirit, which operate as flashes of insight, right? The gifts are not permanent. The gifts are flashes of insight that operate, as uh, John Wimber used to say, the dancing hand of God distributes it whatever way he wants to. Now, uh, but unlike the gifts of the Spirit, which operate as flashes of insight, discerning of spirits may operate as almost a constant. That's when I read that, I said, that's me. But even uh, later when I was a young pastor, I didn't find any pastors that really, uh, they were gifted in many different ways, but not particularly that one. And so they used to tease me. We'd go to conferences, we'd be guest speakers, and they'd, they'd say, young Dennis. So you can tell how long ago that was. <laughs> My peers would say, young dads, come. What do you discern on that guy? What do you discern there? What do you discern there? What do you discern there? And, uh, and they did admit. They said it was the purest discerning of spirits that they had run into. And that's not to brag on me because I, I fought it. I didn't want to know, remember? I wanted to be detached and get information. I don't want to feel the atmosphere. I don't want to feel hurting people. I don't want, until... God revolutionized my thinking and said, it's for their benefit. You don't have to own it. You bear witness to it. Oh, I don't have to live there then. So if they're angry, I don't have to get angry. Not, no, you can if you want to suck it in, but that's not wise, you know, okay? Uh, because, so anyway, some individuals are given particular clarity in, in those three realms, uh, all three realms can be cultivated, but mine was clearly the human spirit. The three areas are the human spirit. And some individuals function primarily in the realm of discerning the human spirit so that they can deal with the needs and root issues in the lives of believers. It's redemption, 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 isn't it? It's not about knowing, knowing, knowing stuff. It's not about just figuring stuff out. Matter of fact, you can have accurate discernment an error on the side of having failed to do anything constructive or redemptive or loving with it, right? That's true of all the gifts. Evil spirits. It seems to be that if they have strong discerning of spirits for evil over the other two, you know, uh, they have a tendency to move in intercession, uh, deal with the... Uh, uh, much of the time, the evil realm, uh, identifying the works of the devil, the source, the source, here's why this is happening, I'm going to intercede against it, I'm going to release loving intercession to push back the powers of darkness around, blah, 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 situation. All right, their emphasis will be on evil spirits, not that they can't do the other two, but there's a tendency for an emphasis, and that emphasis is for a purpose. All right, the third one, of course, is the Holy Spirit. And others may operate mostly in the realm of God's spirit with the ability to follow flow. I once was uh, speaking with uh, um, Jim Gall, and I was telling him about uh, discerning the spirits. I wanted to talk to seasoned people about it and everything. 
Uh, his emphasis was flow. Okay, so that's pretty much understanding the work of the Holy Spirit, but that was not what I was talking about. What I was talking about was distinctive flavors, nuances, and developing a language to assist the person by knowing not just, ooh, that's flesh. If you really want to help somebody, it's got to be more than flesh, or it's demonic. It's got to be more, it's got to be the nature that you deal with from the source. If you identify the source, you can remedy the situation and be redemption. Redemp Redemption's the name of the game. So uh, if you're listening on this and you're all curious about discerning of spirits, uh, you need to be more concerned about helping people and be concerned to benefiting them at the source of their need, not according to what you think or judge. Oh, yeah. Suspicion, by the way, is devil discernment. Suspicion and paranoia, that's devil discernment. So uh, deal with that right up front. Okay, third definition. Um, discerning of spirits. I think this is in the Spirit-Filled Life Bible footnote. Discerning of spirits is the ability to discern the spirit world and especially to detect. Some people don't like this one. The true sources of circumstances and motives of people. Why motives of people? Because people can say the right things, but motive reveals where they're coming from. The heart of the matter are matters of the heart. It's out of the heart the mouth speaks. You can say all kinds of wonderful words, but it's the heart that's going to be attached to what's said, <laughs> good or bad. And uh, much spiritual perception may indeed be accurate, and this has been my hobby horse for 40-some years, is that discernment is great, but once you discern, where's the love? Where's the redemption? Because I've seen enough in the church that they call it discernment. They just say, I'm just speaking to, to your brother the truth. I'm just speaking the truth to your brother. My first question is, well, what I feel coming from you just speaking the truth is I feel a lot of anger and judgmentalism. So uh, where's the love? Where's the redemption? Where is the transformation power that's in the Word of God. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's not just the words. It's the power behind the words, the power of the words, the power of the tongue. A lot of times I think people miss that. Okay? You got those three definitions. It's in three realms, Holy Spirit, and quite frankly, I'm comfortable with all three, but the primary one is clearly, clearly uh, the human spirit. I like the flow, like when I was talking with Jim Gall about flow. I love flow. I can feel when there is an up in the worship, when there's a down, when there's a thing, when there's an increase in anointing. And because ultimately life should be a practicing or a walk in the spirit, not, a, not in the flesh. When you walk in the spirit, there is a flow. You should be able to understand what interrupts that flow, if he truly is uh, being acknowledged in a spiritual walk. Okay? Those three definitions will help something now. And, and by the way, uh, in, in, in our teachings, there is almost all of our books have repetitive things. That's because that repetitive thing is necessary for your foundation. If I were to see problems uh, and, and obstacles in ministering and setting people really free, it's usually in this. Uh, we, we you can even memorize this. We teach God focus, Jesus within, God focus, not, not far away in heaven, yes, he's there. No, no. Your relationship of Jesus within, God focus, God searched. All of our books are based on how to let God search your heart, not people, God. If he knit you together, that's the one that is superior with searching what's wrong with you. God focused on the inside, God searched, and God protected. And you're going to come to fall in love as a Christian. If your walk is really improving in the spirit realm, you're going to fall in love with peace. Peace, there's people that would give their life savings to get out of anxiety. And right now, the primary solution uh, in the world, for sure, uh, as well as the church, is uh, medication because people do not know what to do with their emotions. And 
God didn't give you emotions to trouble you. God gave you emotions for the fruit of the Spirit, the God emotions that we talked about last week. And those God emotions is why you have them. God wants you to experience the reality of His fruit of His Spirit, what we call the God emotions or the fruit of the Spirit. Now, here's the, here's the part uh, that I just got blown away with. Uh, we establish three meetings in this church. And in these three meetings, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, they're all radically different. But then God showed me why. Here's what he's doing. All inner knowings. I had Dave Walters once come teach my children in the first church I was in. He had an excellent uh, ministry with children. And we had them standing on chairs and prophesying to adults. And we had them ministering and in intercession. They, they would make their parents actually come to church on time. Because, because they had to intercede. Don't you realize I got to be there to pray? Like, who's the adult here? Okay. Well, anyway, he taught them, no matter what age they were, three truths over and over again. All inner, look where I'm pointing, all inner, not here, all inner knowings in your spirit, in the hidden man of the heart, the, the innermost being, all inner knowings are either seeing, hearing, touching. Those of you that are watching by video, you talk back, not in this room. <laughs> seeing, hearing, touching. Take notes. Go get a piece of paper. Write it down. Because this isn't all going to be absorbed instantly. This will require practice, and practice will make it permanent part of your life, and you're going to see major good transformation. All right? So it's Seeing, hearing, and touching. And it's interesting because um, if all those inner knowings are seeing, hearing, touching, remember I said God, I'm giving you a lot of threes. God focus, God searching my heart, God protecting me with the peace that guards my heart and my mind. Okay, the counterfeit, and when we travel church to church, we had to we had to break through this ground first. They were self-focused. I'm a mess. You don't understand. Okay, well that's good. Let's deal with the mess. Self-focused, self-searched. You don't. God made you, knit you together in your mother's womb. Let Him do the searching. Let God search your heart. Quit searching your heart. You're not smart enough. Jennifer said that, what, at any given moment in your head, you have two th every second you have 2,000 thought patterns. But in the non-conscious, the subconscious, the area where God wants to search like David, search me for secret faults. Well, who are they secret from? They were secret from David. And when we would travel church to church, the biggest barrier we saw was, I've already forgiven everybody. I love everybody. I don't have any. I can't think of nothing. Which, <laughs> if you knew, if I got a nickel for every time I heard, I've dealt with everything. I'm, all, I'm all. You know, One guy was sitting, we did a church staff once, and he was sitting next to his, his wife, and she goes, I don't know why the pastor had us come and, and get this one-on-one -on -one ministry. I don't need this one-on-one -on -one ministry. I love everybody. I've forgiven everybody. He goes, what about the neighbor when they didn't bring the wheelbarrow back? Well, that's different. <laughs> a little manifestation. It doesn't take much, you know, for the people that have dealt with everything. But you let God search your heart. Self-searching people come up with crazy solutions. Have you ever stayed up all night? Worrying about the kids or something? You stay up all night worrying about it, and you, you figure it out yourself. You'll wake up with something like, oh, I'm just going to kill those kids. I've had an hour of sleep. Like, Boy, that sounds real redemptive, doesn't it? That sounds like, does that sound like God to you? All right. So self-focused, self-searched, and that's what most people do. I can't think of anything, which is a, by the way, it's a biological, physiological Im impossibility to think of nothing. <laughs> 
So what it means is I'm in control and I'm not thinking anything and I'm not going to feel anything because I'm not being vulnerable to God. I'm in control. I'm in charge. I'm general manager of the universe. And even if I would momentarily submit, I will campaign again to be in charge of everything. All right? I'm running for office. All right? Now, the, the interesting thing is all these inner knowings, Listen to the seeing, hearing, and touching. This is of Jesus. Let's use a good example, right? In Jesus, John 5, 19, he says, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father doing, this the Son does also. Okay? Hearing. Whatever I speak, I just speak as the Father has told me. So I speak, John 12, 50. So we have, I only do what I see, I only say what I hear. And then it says, um, and as I hear, I judge, I decide. As the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. My judgment is right because I do not seek my own consult. I'm not searching myself and giving my own opinion. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself. I'm only here to, my aim is to do the will and the pleasure of the Father. And here's the one where, that I identified with as a young Christian when I read this in the scripture that nobody talks about it. But in Luke 8, 46, Jesus is walking with his disciples and he said, who touched me? For I, pers and they're going, well, everybody's kind of pressing on you. You know, they're in the natural realm. He's not, no, in the spirit who touched me. Somebody drew virtue from me and I could feel it. Do you think Jesus walked in all three? I think Jesus walked in everything, <laughs> don't you? The perfect, the perfect man to show us how to live. Seeing, hearing, and touching, all three of those. All right, now, here's what I wanted to show you. God had us supernaturally, uh, when when we moved out of the uh, uh, the larger room and came back here so that we could videotape on Sundays for these programs to go on uh, ISN. But on Tuesdays, we were led to come on Tuesday night and soak in the presence of God. And people have said, we felt um, uh, uh, in, in the spirit realm a unity and an anointing that I've never had by myself. Well, of course not. You can't have a corporate anointing by yourself for one thing. All right? And now on Thursdays, um, we are doing just ministry, no teaching, just the teaching that's necessary to minister effectively. And I looked at that, and the Lord said, you see what's going on here? And I really didn't need another meeting from a natural point of view. But God was saying, do it. And I saw on Sunday morning, if you were being, watching on YouTube, if you were being ministered to, primarily all inner knowings are what? Hearing, seeing, and touching. All of those are cultivated in the three meetings. On Sunday, you should be saying, he that has ears to hear, let's hear what the Spirit is saying through the preaching of the Word. I need to hear what God is saying. Even in my private devotions, if I'm reading Scripture and all of a sudden one particular verse means more than another, guess what? He that has ears to hear, God expects you to actually apply that to your life and obey it. That's why it came off the page for you individually. By the same token, that's what Sunday's messages are. If they're grabbing your heart in any way, shape, or form, there's a, a, you're required to submit to God, inquire of Him as to how to apply it, and then obey. Okay? So Sunday is the hearing, cultivating your spirit's ability to receive, cultivating your inner ability as His sheep to know His voice. Now, Tuesday comes along, and there's no program other than we're sitting at these tables. There's background music that's soft. 
and it's kind of you could uh, the, the the one of the more recent terms was soaking that came about decades ago though soaking but that's a healthy term because people didn't really know how to receive they knew how to pour out but they didn't know how to just submit to God and what we're teaching over and over and over again to cultivate your spirit to discern God is to do what David said we teach this even in our basic like a weaned child with its mother I have quieted my soul within me Christians that are not advancing not maturing not being enjoying a transformed life not living in the fruit of the spirit for one thing don't know how to sit still they have to be doing something I know people like they can't even pray unless they're walking all of that says my mind my will and my emotions even though it's not comfortable to my flesh I have to quiet my flesh like a wean child with its mother until the spirit ascends over my mind will and emotions he's not trying to destroy not trying to suppress your mind will and emotions he's trying to make your mind will and emotions usable he wants to blow the wind of his spirit through you and be a blessing to other people as well as functioning in your destiny. Duh. <laughs> a minor little side issue there. You can never fulfill the plans and the purposes that God has put within you until you quiet that flesh and submit it to the Lordship of Jesus. And what do you have to submit? You, some of you, it's easier for one or two than the other. But it has to be to have your mind renewed. That word in, is in the Greek is nous, N-O-U-S, and it means mindset. Mind will and emotions now you could be anti-emotions but I'll tell you what you will never be you will never be you and listen to me all you Bible scholars even who don't feel anything ever you will never be more mature than your emotions allow you to do you will never be spiritually mature you could be extremely knowledgeable but you will never be more emotionally mature than your emotions allow you because God created those emotions for the fruit of the Spirit and the kingdom is righteousness peace and joy and all three of those are emotional uh-huh righteousness is love and action peace joy those weren't meant to be mental concepts so you could quote the answer. God actually expected you to experience joy. He expected love. He expected you to have supernatural peace that will guard your heart and your mind. Make life worth living. He himself is your peace. Okay? Can you, can you see what's, what I'm saying here? All three are necessary. And all three need to be developed. And Thursdays we do... Here's, here's what we do. We do our simple uh, emotional healing prayer. Close your eyes. The first person that you see, the first circumstance that comes to mind, see, 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 and don't say, I don't see nothing. I just see black. Okay. That's a defense mechanism, which really means I don't really want God searching me. I want to be self-searched, self-controlled, self-protected, self, self, self. Well, you walk in the flesh, you fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's exactly what you get based on the law of sowing and reaping. All the people that are afraid for vulnerability, you know, I can understand being afraid of being vulnerable if you were really beat up in life, going through dysfunctional relationships. But the solution is Jesus. To be afraid to be vulnerable to him is sin. It's sin. Start with the safest place in the world to be vulnerable. God. He's not going to hurt you. And quit projecting on God what your upbringing brought you. Your father might have been a, a, a monster. But don't project that on God. The way you see God needs to be healed up. And that's actually quite easy to do. We did that Thursday. There's five elements. We're not going there. Okay. Now, three areas. Discerning God. Discerning self. And discerning evil. We got that? We're going to discern God, self, 
not evil, <laughs> discerning God, self, and others. <laughs> Some of them are evil, but what are you going to do? <laughs> redemption, redemption, redemption. We've got to bless them, that curse. Pray for them that spitefully use, okay? Discerning God, discerning self, and discerning others. And I'm really not... Uh, overly blessed by people who think they discern others real good, but they don't know how to discern God or self. Okay? That's usually just judging. And anybody can do that. All right? It's not about judging. Because I want to see, where's the loving redemption with what you just said? Now, most of the time it's lacking. That someone's just mad at somebody. And they go, I discern she's a Jezebel. I discern. Yeah, it's probably one talking. You know, projection is one of the devil's favorite tools. Whatever someone may be accusing you of, it might be exactly what their nature is coming from. <laughs> anyway, we won't go there. All right, discerning God. Here's what, the way God groomed me, and he can groom you the same way. You have uh, scriptures maybe written in your Bible that from an early time on, they meant something to you. Well, mine was Philippians 3.10 in the Amplified. And... Here was discerning God, discerning self, discerning others. The first thing I learned was how to uh, locate the presence of God in my spirit, in my inner person, and understanding that the door of the heart was down here, not here. And Philippians 3.10 was that I might know him. Oh, drink this in, because this, this area transformed my life, so there's got to be an anointing. It's a testimony. If it's a testimony, it's more anointed than preaching. Right? <laughs> okay. Open up your heart right now just with you. That I might know him. There it is. That I might progressively, okay, it's a process, that I might progressively become more intimately acquainted with all the wonders of his personhood. You drink that in and let him write that on the tablet of your heart. And what you are, you're going to cultivate discerning God. Because once you, once you feel how good that feels, you'll know that that's God. And then if you hear some crazy thought in your head, you'll, you'll know whether it's God or it's a crazy thought. We'll get to that later. But right now, that I might know him. Let's drink it in. That I might know him. And I'm opening my heart. I'm opening my heart and I'm drinking, soaking, whatever word you want to call, receiving I'm not just thinking, I'm drinking. I'm opening my heart that I might know him, that I might progressively, that means I'm going to keep doing this, I might progressively become more intimately acquainted with all of the wonders of his person. You know what I did for years? I took anything the Bible said about God and walked in that relationship. He's my apostle. He's my prophet. He's my evangelist. He's my, he's my shepherd. He's my... Lord, he's my Savior, he's my Jehovah, he's my Adonai, he's my Elohim. And finding out what all those aspects of the characteristics of him, I wanted to drink it in and walk it out so that it was a reality. That's knowing God. All right. Now, as you know God, <coughs> and God always made it, the, the number one thought on that was the Holy Spirit is a person He's God. It's not an it. You want to be disrespectful as a Christian? Say you got zapped or, oh, I got hit with, bam. All right. You can do that with a pure heart, but you could also do that disrespectfully. It's not an it. You do things with an it that you wouldn't do with a person. You'll do something with a thing. Don't treat the Holy Spirit. Look at even the Word of God is Jesus. All things are open and naked to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So right after the, he's called the living word, the very next verse says, all things are naked and open to the eyes of him. You've got to have a deeper personal relationship with God. And I'm not impressed with people's giftings if what's coming from their gifting is to be seen and heard or, or some unhealthy character flaw that really needs to be developed. The gifts are without repentance. Now, as far as discerning God, I'm trying to break down how much time I've got left to give you the best I can possibly give you in the period of time I've allotted <laughs> before they take me off. <laughs> All right? Discerning God 
the thing that the Lord did to me, and which would be very helpful for you to learn, is he said, anything that comes that you feel is attached to God, anything from Scripture, anything, anything you hear, write that truth down, submit to it, write it down, means you're honoring that word. Ask God how to develop it in your life. And then check yourself out later and see if it really took. <laughs> right? Truth. Cultivate the truth. And then check yourself out to see if it worked. I want real Christianity. I don't want saying the right answer game. Most Christians can give you the right answer from the Bible. Not necessarily are they living it. So let's go with the, for the hard one. Honor God as a person. I don't want to grieve, quench, or resist Him in any way. I want to submit my mind, will, and emotions for God's mind, God's will, God's emotions. You know, uh, peace precedes your perception. Now, Francis Frangipane taught it like this, and I really liked it. He said, peace, down here, comes before or precedes your perception. So you want discernment? Your perception, if it's not coming from peace, it'll be like, the, if your kid starts acting up and you're not at peace, you're going to go, ah, pull, 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 slap that kid. Okay, that might be your perception. That kid's got a demon. I got to take him to church and get him delivered. All right. It might be you <laughs> that has lost its peace and living in the frustration of your flesh. Maybe we ought to deal with you first. <laughs> huh? All right. So, peace precedes your perception. So, and by the way, if peace is something you're living in as a normative state, that's actually love resting. Love precedes peace. That's the manifestation of love ruling and love resting. Remember, kingdom of God is love, joy, peace. It's not going to change. So if you're in the kingdom, or the, let the peace of God rule, who's ruling in that scripture? Let the peace of God rule. Peace, or God himself, he himself is our peace, all right? So now you've got peace, the love of God in your heart, peace preceding, and your perception that you're going to have the heart of Jesus before you have the eyes of Jesus. Does that make sense? If you don't have the heart of Jesus, what you see with your eyes, I don't trust it. It's your perception. And it's like wearing tinted glasses. It's going to be based on the source, the source, the source. Remember what we say about discernment? It identifies the source of a circumstance or motive of people. It's not about the right answer. No. We're going to the second one. Discerning self. By the way, discerning others is not the important one. Discerning God and discerning self. So before you learn to discern other people, learn to let God discern you. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? And he does that. There's no Because there's no accuracy without the Word of God. So really the way you, you, you discern God in prayer and in the Word, but you drink instead of think, you feed instead of read. All right, here's, here's the way Jennifer and I pray when we're reading a scripture. We're not reading all the time for massive amounts, but when you're reading it, it's almost like you're praying it and reading it at the same time. I want, the I want to meet the author. I want the author of that word. I want the reality of the Holy Spirit revealing to me what that says. Now, because the word is reality, God's way is always love. Yep, always. And his will is for oneness. And I'll tell you what, I'm, i got to be careful, I don't brag, but this congregation has a depth of unity that I've not seen. And that will bring about a health and a healing 
to your physical body and your well-being and a sense of supernatural protection. Hmm? Because everybody doesn't want to mature. They want entertained. They want something for nothing. It, it, it's it, all kinds of motives that are not pure. But when a person has matured enough to where they, they can be joined, they actually are easily able to assemble without losing their individuality to something bigger than themselves. Right now it's very uh, fashionable for not to do that, but anyway. <laughs> uh, there's no accuracy without that word. Hebrews 4.12 says what? In discerning is that the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides asunder between soul and spirit. What's it saying? When you're reading the word and praying reading the word, you should be hearing things like, that's flesh, Dennis, that's spirit. Choose spirit. Or when we used to pray with somebody, they say, I, I don't know, I'm trying to deal with it, but I'm stuck, which is an impossibility. Stuck simply means, Jesus isn't stuck. He don't get stuck halfway through a wall. You got Jesus in you? When you say you're stuck, what that means is part of me wants to do this and part of me don't. So what, we, what do we do? Agree with the part of you that wants to because that's the part that loves God and loves his word. That's the new creation reality. Agree with that part, not your flesh that goes, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like, I thought Jennifer, I don't want to go to church. She goes, but you have to, you're the pastor. <laughs> well, then I'm going to have to agree with my spirit, man, and not my flesh. Right? Now, this word discerns you by the searching of the heart. And this is what we said, this is what we teach people. God focused, oh, that I might know him. God searched. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any hurtful way in me. Who's searching? You? No, you're asking God to search your heart. That's the proper way. And look at this. Search me, O God. This is a new American standard. Search me, O God. Try my anxious thoughts. The source, the source, the source. Discerning yourself means get, it's not about the thoughts. It's about the anxious thoughts. And it's not about your choices, your ways. It's about the hurtful choices, the hurtful way. If you would deal with the hurt and the anxiety, you'd be walking, you'd be welcoming the discernment that God is trying to tell you. But what about people, I don't want anybody searching my heart. I've dealt with everything. And your life will show it. How many people go to you for help? People that have dealt with everything and are so perfect. Why aren't people flocking to you for prayer? I don't know about you, but I don't go to a depressed person and ask them to pray for me. <laughs> Is there something wrong with me about that? I mean, I, huh? Now, if the word discerns you by the searching of the heart, it also tells us, and this is for Kingdom Life Church and everyone that's been connected with us, and we have people connected with us from around the country that are, that are knit at the hip with us. And you have to understand that you need to move from milk to meat because it says, Hebrews 5, 13, everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use, oh, you mean you got to practice this? You can't just do this one time and you're okay? Uh, who by reason of use have their senses, spiritual senses, exercised to discern good from evil. So apparently starting out milk is good. Enjoy the sincere milk of the word, but you need, by reason of time, the writer of the Hebrews was saying, by reason of time, you ought to be teachers and you still need milk. It's because the, the, your word level might be high up here, but it's not high as far as transformation and discernment. Let that word discern you. And those who are spiritual discern all things. We went to a ministry that did inner healing, and they were blown out of the water because they're, they're known worldwide. But Jennifer and I did it way faster without the paperwork without the case histories. And they, they said, I've got a scripture for you, Dennis. The spiritual man discerns all things because they saw the element of discernment in Christian counseling. 
Because you can do Christian counseling in all different realms. And thank God the Holy Spirit works in, in many of them, uh, well, except the secular. I don't really have much confidence in that. But uh, the ability, you know, you have to meet people where they're at. If I was a secular person and I was messed up, I'd go for counseling, secular counseling. But if I was a Christian, I'd go and see what Jesus can do. Hmm? Now, if the word is discerning you, and you need to have your senses exercised to discern good and evil, then there's training. And in 2.15, those who are spiritual discern all things. That should be a challenge to every believer. You're going to have to get better at discerning. Discerning God, discerning self, and discerning others. But as far as discerning yourself, use what you have. We actually call that daily discernment because you do this day to day. Now let's put your thoughts. To, we got time. I'm going to put some, uh, give you a little bit so you can test the stuff that's going on on here. Because I, I get weary as a pastor. Maybe you do too. If you've been mature as a Christian for a long I get weary of people saying God said when I know it's not. <laughs> and what's the general rule of thumb amongst pastors and leaders when someone says God said and you don't agree with it? Of course, they, if they have a predilection, meaning they already have a preference, they don't want a second opinion. Okay. A healthy person is not afraid to bounce it off of another person. You don't have to agree with them, but you don't ever have to be afraid of bouncing it off either. That's the balance there. Um, but they would say, test it by the word, the spirit, and the fruit. This is for them to do, because they may not take the word of anybody else. You do this, and test it by the word. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is it scripture. Does it violate the word? Shouldn't that be simple enough? Shouldn't that by itself be enough? If you hear something in your head, and it's contrary to the scriptures. All right, but the devil can quote scripture too. So test it by the spirit. The Holy Spirit distinctly, expressly declares that in the latter times some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding spirits and seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. God's voice imparts life. If God's telling you to do something that's going to make you and the people around you miserable, you need to bounce that off. You need to know that there's life in it. If there's no life in it, it's probably just condemnation. You know, the devil will speak in the third person. Like, he'll, I mean, he'll even say, I'm stupid. And that's not even me saying it. I'm stupid. I don't deserve. Just because you hear it in your head doesn't mean it's you. doesn't mean it's God either. Test it by the Spirit. God's voice always imparts life. What's the Spirit behind it? Does it produce life? And then lastly, test it by the fruit. God's voice produces good. It always produces fruit. And spiritual strength. Spiritual strength depends on your level, your level of receptivity. Now, when it comes to our Tuesday, the whole purpose behind that is because in my experience with spirit-filled Christians, most supernatural, I said most, is too quiet for their flesh. If it's flamboyant and extremely demonstrative, anybody can recognize that. You don't even have to be a Christian, <laughs> right? And those things happen. But the real Christian life is in weaning that soul from its noise. And most supernatural is too quiet. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall know their God. They will mount up. That kind of knowledge is inner knowledge. That is a more constant knowledge. God didn't expect you to live from one mountaintop to the next mountaintop. He expected you to have a walk. As you received him, so walk. 
Now, God discerns your potential. Uh, your life might look like chaos right now, but God's the solution to that chaos. He can bring peace to storms. And there's storms right now that really God is, is laying on my heart in my prayer time that there's people that are going to be hurting and they're going to get marvelous, marvelous redemptive answers in the days ahead. Marvelous. But it's going to be because they're turning to God focus instead of self focus. They're going to start turning to God search instead of somebody else searching them. It's going to turn out to God protection instead of them protecting themselves. By the way, protecting themselves. Every church we went to, and we went to some marvelous churches, every church we went to, 98% of the people did this still. This is still children level. And I don't want to insult you, but it is. Is they see somebody they're not comfortable with walking down the aisle in a grocery store, and down here, they put up the wall. Nod your head if you know, even know what I'm talking about. You know what that means? I close the door of my heart, not just to them, but to God. I'm in control now. I'm on my own. When you, when you put up that wall, that wall does not protect you. The only legitimate wall is peace. And it'll guard your heart and your mind. But if you're not walking with God that close, you're going to be doing this your whole life. And, and you can be lonely in a crowd. You can feel rejection when there's nobody rejecting you. You can see someone on the phone and say, I know they're talking about me. Is that the way you want to live? Huh? That's living in a, a state of paranoia, the counterfeit to real discern him. Discern his voice. Discern his nature. Fall in love with the ability that I have a spirit-to-spirit -spirit relationship with him, and I know how to quiet my mind, will, and emotions and get it down to where, like a weaned child with its mother, I've quieted my soul within me. Now, we've got a little bit of time left. Now we'll talk about discerning others. But really, can you tell where the emphasis needs to be? Discern God and discern yourself. <laughs> Let God discern you, and you get to know him. All right? Now to discern others. There's hope for you. If you're really messed up, that's the good news. We have an answer. There's hope for you yet. You're going, oh, man, I don't mess. He's everything he's saying. I don't do it. none of that right. I don't do it. Well, guess what? You can learn quick. Jennifer, our 60-day challenge is named after Jennifer, and quite frankly, in less than 60 days. Her mentor said, you're not going to marry Jennifer. She's brilliant, but uh, she's too damaged emotionally to ever amount to anything. Give me the damaged emotionally ones that will turn to God, and you'll see results in a short period of time. That lady was judging Jennifer based on, uh, she was sincere, but she was basing it on her failures. She shouldn't have been a counselor. She was more secular school counseling. Not really, her Christian counseling was lacking. Some good material, but no spiritual insight. She saw Jennifer after we were married a very short time. Said, wow, what happened to you? I want that to be your testimony. I want that to be your testimony. Wow, you're different now. I knew the situation you were in, and you're different now. That should be every A testimony means I passed the test, but it's a Holy Spirit that did it, not my ability. Now, Look at, did you know in Mark chapter 3, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly, with discerning others, God called what later became the apostle of love, sons of thunder. <laughs> I think he had a little bit to deal with, don't you think? Yeah. But uh, he, called, he, he called Peter and James sons of Zebedee. He gave the name, which means sons of thunder. So I think he had to calm them down a little bit. So there's hope for you. You might be a son or a daughter of thunder, but God says, I can fix that. If you will give me your heart, I will work with you. And the disciples, they judged by outward appearance. They didn't have discernment at that beginning. They were, hey, they're not like us. You want us to call down fire and burn them up? That was, that was their attitude. Uh, they didn't understand. They would argue it. They're competitive. Who's going to sit where? Oh, give me a break. Come on. Who's going to sit where? Spirit, soul, and body is God's order. 
And God saying, if you want to discern, the gift of discernment, you have to give up that quickness to judge. It'll get in the way. You will have to say, I want the mind of Christ in this matter. Those people are crazy out there, and they're asking me to do this and asking me to do that. Well, they may be, but ask God. What's required in this situation? How can I bring about a redemptive solution? If they don't want a solution, then there's nothing I can do, but I can still pray. Push back the powers of darkness from around their hostility and their stubbornness. Push back. That's not control and that's not manipulation. I'm not making them do anything. I'm simply saying, I let love flow out of me and push back the powers of darkness from around them so that they can make a free will decision. Uh, they make a free will decision. Not my will. They make a free will decision. But God basically says, you've got you to clean up your act. I'm just going to close with the, I'm not going to give you all of them. I'm just going to close with some of the things that hinder really discerning. Uh, low fellowship with the Father. I don't trust anybody's discernment that doesn't have a prayer life. Because they'll be going by the cognitive appraisal. Um, low word level. If the Word of God discerns you and you're not in the Word... <laughs> I don't have a lot of confidence that you're going to come up with stuff that God said when it's not scriptural. <laughs> you know, um, Pride. I can still remember the guy that I saw. His eyes turned as black as two pieces of coal. He needed deliverance. But when I was showing him and gave him opportunity to minister to him and set him free from a demon, he said, oh, that's good for other people, but I don't need it. And he tilted his head back like that. And I saw with my eyes wide open like a Humpty Dumpty. He wasn't bald, but I saw like a bald Humpty Dumpty with an up there look. And it was a spirit of pride. Unless they humble themselves, you don't really, you can't accomplish anything. But I just said, I, I pushed back the powers of darkness around them because I know pride comes before a fall. And God, make it available that there's something redemptive when they do fall. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Unforgiveness. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, the counterfeit to discernment is really lust. Lust wants what it wants. It's locked into wanting what it wants, so it'll say, I have a piece about that. Don't be around someone that can really discern and say, you've got a piece about something that's actually lust. They just might call you on. I'm, I'm older now. I get to say stuff that I didn't normally used to say. Don't look out. Don't try to pull one over. I just might tell you the truth. Oh, no. I used to like the ones that come up, Pastor, if you see anything in me, tell me. Those kind of people, if you're that vulnerable, you and God are going to have a good relationship. You know? You're not afraid of vulnerability a soulish or faulty value system that'll harm you. Oh, so a good witness can be a bad, but also a prejudice, you can call that discernment. Oh, I don't believe in speaking in tongues, and that person spoke in tongues, and down here goes, Ugh. that's because your value system says it's not legitimate. So a bad witness can be disguised as, no, that's your prejudice. That's your problem. So, Father, seal this work right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bring these people into a new dimension. And thank you, God, that we are developing the seeing, hearing, and touching in these three services here at Kingdom Life Church. And as far as you want to develop the what we're doing here on Thursdays, and you're from another state and all that, you go online. There's enough material on YouTube for you to practice getting... Sensitive. Take the notes from this video. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. 
Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.